Valdemar, 1902. A very strong player. Top 200 on the ladder. An absolute beast of a player. And today what we are going to be doing is having a look at this game of him versus our actual hero, Lenok. So as good as Valdemar is, Lenok is going to absolutely stomp him in this game. And our goal is to figure out how exactly Lenok does this. Because if you or I were to go into the ladder and try to stop, stomp you know, uh, Valdemar, we wouldn't really be successful. Valdemar is, again, top 200 player, very comfortable in long macro games. He has a Twitch stream and YouTube, so all that's going to be linked down below. Uh, Valdemar is very nice, friendly, very friendly in the chat as well, always willing to answer questions. And I have a lot of respect for Valdemar as a player. And as a result, if Lenok is going to stomp him the way he does, I want to see how he does it. How does Lenok, who is uh, currently ranked 7 on the ladder, uh, take a player who is as good as Valdemar and just destroy him? <laughs> so that is what we're going to be doing in this replay here today. We're going to be focusing very heavily on the perspective of Lenok more than anything else. I want to work with the same amount of information that Lenok is. I want to uh, look at the game through the eyes of Lenok and try to figure out what are the moves that he makes. So we're going to try to look for decisions. We're going to look for... So decisions is a very broad term. We're going to look for when does he get town centers? When does he get upgrades? When does he attack? With what does he attack? That sort of deal. So we're going to really uh, nitpick and try to go over this game with a fine tooth, fine tooth comb and uh, figure everything out here. So single scout opening here by uh, Lenok. And uh, he's going to be going around the map in this pattern right here. The sheep is not the most important thing uh, for Lenok, for the English, I would say, as a resource, just because the farms are really, really good. So uh, that is why we're going to be seeing a single scout opening. The uh, matchup is also going to be an English mirror. And so that's actually really cool uh, for a few reasons. If we're going to look at Lenok and try to figure out how exactly he gets ahead in a mirror, we know that it has to do... Uh, with mechanics, it has to do with really good decisions, and it has less to do with like the asymmetry that you can find between civilizations. You know, for example, you could blindside someone uh, with a Mongol tower rush in, in many different matchups, and turn the matchup ahead upside down. But in an English mirror like this one, well, it's all down to player skill, which is making this game a very fantastic one for analysis. Wheelbarrow has been picked up here right around 2.45. So that is already one of the decisions that Lenok has made, opting for a very aggressive wheelbarrow opening. And, you know, uh, you might look at this and be like, okay, well, cool, like, wheelbarrow, it's not that big of a d deal, not, not that interesting of a thing to look at, but it actually does matter a fair amount. Uh, getting wheelbarrow earlier in a game like this one, the goal of Lenok is going to be to get a small advantage and then ch turn that into a slightly larger one and then that larger larger advantage into a l larger one, larger one, larger one, larger one. We're going to look for a compounded uh, advancement of an advantage here as Lenok. And it all starts by playing a little bit greedy and getting a nice Dark Age wheelbarrow. That was at 245 when that was on the table, so I think that's probably the fastest wheelbarrow you could probably get as the English Civilization. And uh, let's see here, four villagers on the council hall. Again, like I said, we're going over this with a fine tooth comb. We're going to look over every single decision. We're going to look over the villager allocation. We're going to look over uh, the amount of villagers on the landmarks. We're going to look at age of times, that sort of thing. You'll notice he actually opted to go for this lumber camp right here, as opposed to over here. Uh, that is a little bit closer to the town center, so the villagers do have to walk a little bit extra. A little, little less, actually, I should say. And uh, that does matter. We do notice uh, he is starting to pick up some stone right here. The allocation right now is 4, 8, and then 4 on the landmark. Uh, also sending this scout right around here. Again, this is very uh, quintessential English play. This is perfect English play, is what I would say. Le Lenok has been playing the game, I think, pretty much since it came out. And has been at the top of the ladder uh, for over a year. For as, as long as like he's played the game. Lenok is uh, was made it into code S for StarCraft II, and uh, that is an accomplishment that very very few people uh, actually have to their name uh, to this day. Uh, I, I would say that the GSL is probably one of the greatest RTS leagues of all time, and for Lenok having made it in code S there, 
it is a huge testament to his skill. Uh, Abia Kings here out of Aldemar. Again, we're working with the same information as uh, Leenok here. So we are going to be able to scout the landmark, the barracks. Very interesting to go for a barracks uh, in an English mirror. I do think that that's probably going to be... Can you actually see that? <laughs> I don't think you can see that in a real game, but it does look like Aldemar is actually going to be able... Uh, to is going for men at arms here, so uh, yeah, that that is the decision out of Valdemar. Let's go back to the base, however, of Lina. You'll notice a fair amount of villagers here on stone. We are macroing up for a second town center very, very quickly. These villagers have been mining the stone since before the age of came in, and uh, no, we're not going to invest into very many upgrades at this point. You'll see that the mining upgrade. Horticulture, all those have been left alone as of right now. We are just maintaining enough villagers on food to maintain villager production. And then all of the other villagers here will be tasked to building that second town center. A single longbowman has been made. Now, when I play English, I like to make three. But our friend Lenok here is better than I am. He's only going to make one because one is going to be more than sufficient to zone villagers away from natural resources. This is, this is enough... To move villagers around you don't need three you just need one this is such a very small uh decision by lena but it's also such a very good one we do have that men at arm uh, going across the map right now is forcing out another long woman perhaps another second uh, men at arm right there we're actually going to go ahead and turn on i do this every freaking game right now <laughs> i really need to start working on that uh, but we are going to be making just enough long bowmen to push away these men at arms here. And Valdemar playing maybe a little bit, would I call this scared? No, not really, because these, uh, I don't think that those men at arms can really push the issue any further. Uh, the, all of these villagers are pretty much protected by the town centers and the longbowmen. So yeah, let's have a look at that town center. As you can see, it's gonna be up uh, right around seven minutes. This longbowman right now is still doing a lot of work. Despite this one longbowman not having any kills, uh, at the very least that I have seen, uh, it has been doing a fair amount of work here. And as you can see, the villagers of Valdemar over here have only just moved off of stone in order to build Valdemar Second Town Center. Lenox is already up. So as you can see, it is a very crisp, crisp play. We're going straight for the Second Town Center. Off the back of our wheelbarrow. Everything just kind of like uh, falls into place like a jigsaw puzzle very, very nicely. <clears throat> And so only now are we going to start working on our tier 1 economic upgrades. Now, I will say this, is that uh, I've actually had a look at this replay prior to what we're doing right now, prior to this recording. And I've had a very good idea on like the overall game state, so I'm going to be able to add a little bit of perspective on that one. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to say is that obviously we are getting our tier 1 economic upgrades starting to trickle in right now, whereas Valdemar has been pushed off of gold. So that means that not only do we have our second town center up faster than Valdemar, but we also have our tier 1 coming in much faster as well. Here's that next 100 gold that's immediately going to be spent on something. That something is going to be steeled arrow. So then we're going to have plus 1 ranged attack on our longbowman. Notice Lenok just is still babysitting this single longbowman. The single longbowman has been doing so, so much work. Not in forms of damage, but in form in the form of taking villagers off of gold and preventing tier 1 economic upgrades from going. And remember guys, Valdemar top 200 player. Don't look at this game and be like, oh, purple so noob or whatever. No, no, no. Uh, Valdemar is, in a, is a very, very good player. And so every decision that Lenok makes has to be perfect. And that's why there's so much value in watching this game. We have Horror to Culture coming in as well here. So right now, the decision of Lenox, strategically speaking, uh, we do have a mill being put up as well. We're going to go for a second town center right off the bat. That's going to be up by right around seven minutes. And then after that, we're going to start working on our tier one upgrades, both military and economic. We have Horticulture coming in uh, right there. We have some Steeled Arrow coming in. At this point, we have started to invest into units here as Lenox. And these long women, like this move out, is going to do a fair amount of work here. This is not designed to kill our opponent. This is designed to further our lead more than anything else. And uh, these men-at-arms, I think they're a pretty cool idea out of Aldemar here. However, the longbowmen, remember, they have uh, one extra attack compared to normal archers. And so as a result, they're actually much better versus these armored men-at-arm units in the Feudal Age than the classic archer is. 
So I do believe that men at arms, uh, maybe not the best choice I think out of Valdemar here. But I don't know. I don't know. That remains to be seen. And again, like look at that. Look, look at all these villagers just being idled like crazy here. This is what that move out is designed to do. We're going to idle these villagers. We're going to push them off. We're not necessarily going to kill villagers. We have killed off a, a couple men at arms right now. But these longbowmen act as like a, a almost like a keep in, in the feudal age. Imagine a keep that you have and that you can move around and deny resource gathering from your opponent. That's exactly what we have right there. And look at this. Look at this production queue. We have a specialized pick. We have forestry. We have fitted leatherwork coming in. So again, we're investing all of our gold right now into all of the tier 1 upgrades because we've made a commitment to feudal. And uh, that, that's just a wonderful way to further your lead. If you uh, We've created a small lead. And Leenog is merely going to invest into upgrades in order to further that lead. Because right now, Valdemar needs to be investing... Uh, resources into other things instead of uh, upgrades at this point. So we do have the town center up for uh, our friend uh, Valdemar here, but remember, this town center has been up at a later point than Linox. However, we did also spot that age up coming in for uh, Valdemar, so that's actually going to be quite good for him. We're not very close to aging up on our end here as Linox. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick uh, sip of coffee here as we uh, look at this game state. I will always say this. Coffee and Age of Empires go so well together. It's one of my pleasures of life. So we know that Valdemar is going up to the next stage. He has reached Castle Age, and we're not exactly at that point yet. So we are going to have somewhat of a tech advantage come in here for Valdemar. Uh, we might be able to get some armor-clad men-at-arms. Uh, that is going to be a problem here for our feudal army. Uh, we might have knights come out as well. So we do have uh, Lee Nox starting to add in Hardened Spearmen. We notice... Uh, yeah, right there. Yep. So we're, we're looking for the gold deposits right now. If you guys remember the Beastie Cutie video I did a little while back... Uh, but By the way, I misread a few things in that video. I'll, I'll make another follow-up video on that one if you guys want. But uh, for the time being, just know that um, hitting these natural resources is always very powerful. The gold... Uh, the gold is always exposed so not always exposed but if the gold is exposed and you can hit it that is a very powerful move that you can make and it's a move that really rewards map control so right now valdemar is actually going to be struggling a little bit uh, in order to get uh, the production he needs of knights and men at arms i think to deal with this feudal force here and now Lenok has cut units and uh, will be headed up to the next stage uh, himself but we also need to be aware of the fact that we have a fair amount of good upgrades in here for Lino. We have Horticulture, we have uh, all the wood, and we have all the Tier 1 economic upgrades. On top of that, we have had our second town center up for a longer time than our opponent. And so at this point, so long as we have a constant villager production, we have a villager lead to work with. Uh, that's just mathematical. Now we do have uh, that age up coming in right now for Lino. Still being aggressive right now. Uh, walling up here, this is going to, this is a counterplay versus night raids more than anything else. If, I, if, I, if I'm reading this correctly, which sometimes I don't always. But at the same time, I mean, these units have been doing such a really good job just denying the gold gathering of Aldemar right now. And again, so the question is, so let's, you know, we, we see the situation and our goal is to, is to ask how did this happen? We have units here denying the gold gathering of Valdemar. How did that happen? It happened because Lenox had a military advantage. Lenox's military advantage came from the fact that he opted to invest into those military units, but also he is more easily able to invest in those military units because he has a better economy than Valdemar, just generally speaking, because the second town center has been up earlier. The second town center has been up earlier because the build order that Lenox did was articulated around a very quick second town center and uh, this wheelbarrow that we got also uh, you know coupled in right there but again Valdemar now has amassed a couple of uh, cavalry units and that's going to do very well in this situation all these longbowmen are going to be forfeit right now and this should open up this gold mine for uh, Valdemar once more and I wouldn't call this hot water for Lenok but this is definitely something where he's going to have to you know deal with I think, yeah, he's going to be bringing back uh, these uh, veteran longbowmen right now. 
A little bit of an interesting fight. I love this positioning here of the Longbowman. This is actually... So you know how I said like this was kind of like a keep earlier? Well, these palings like really reinforce that right now. Going to make it a little bit difficult for Cavalry to really engage in there. Screw this deer. That deer should die. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a difficult to position to push into here as Valdemar. We are going to have a Cavalry counterattack that we've uh, kind of scouted here. But we do have our walls up and ready to go for that eventuality. So we're, we're all pretty much set here. And uh, we did age up here with the King's Palace. Now we should note that the King's Palace of Valdemar has been up for a longer time than ours. So the maybe the villager lead has been closed a little bit, but at this point I think we should be able to maintain our villager lead uh, based off of our three town center versus three town center situation that we have here as Leenock. And again, just trickling in upgrades. You know, we have uh, Lumber Preservation, we have Iron Undermesh, we have Fertilization coming in as well. All of these upgrades are absolutely worth getting, and it's 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 a powerful... It, it may look simple, but if you get your upgrades, if you get Wheelbarrow before your opponent, that's an advantage. If you get your second Town Center before your opponent, that's an advantage. Everything is a game of time, and Leenok is sitting at rank 7 on the ladder right now because he understands that. All right, we do have a little bit of a move out here by Leenok. There's a fair amount of units here on the side of Valdemar, so we're going to have to be careful. We don't have a ton of uh, spearmen here to work with. Only six. Only six. This might be a little bit of an overextension here by Leenok. We're going to have to see exactly how that pans out. Uh, these, yeah, these long women are going to have to kite back and run away from the cavalry. Uh, these men-at-arms here did make short work of all of the spearmen right there. We don't have armor clad in, though. I think you're, if you're investing in Men at Arms as English, you definitely need to get that upgrade. I think it's just too good to not get 2-2, uh, like plus 2-2. Two, two, that, that's, that's just ridiculous. It's so strong. So, but the question is, is Valdemar even able to afford that upgrade? Well, no, because we've been sitting on his gold. <laughs> it's, it's kind of crazy, actually. Such quintessential play. Uh, monastery coming up right now. When I looked at this game, because I, I was watching it on stream uh, first and foremost, I did notice that both players kind of ignored relics a little bit at first. But uh, Leenok is going to be correcting that and opting to choose, uh, opting to you know, get those uh, relics in. We also have some more farms coming in right now. One fifty-two out of one eighty with a very healthy economy. We're getting our own armor clad. We're getting the bloomery. Where we already have. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at here. Fertilization, we have our tier 2 minus uh, the mining upgrade right there. Yeah, and, and I mean at this point, it doesn't matter. I think I think Linux army is way too big for Valdemar to do anything to it. And you see, small lead, and it just gets progressively and slowly snowballed into a very big lead. At this point, uh, we've I think we've reached the tipping point of this game actually a little while back. <laughs> actually going for the sacred victory here is Linux. It's quite funny. Uh, Monk uh, running away from a wolf right there. That is uh, Age of Empires 4 for you. Uh, but yeah, you know. Early wheelbarrow. Early town center. Get all of those things rolling as soon as possible. If your opponent doesn't punish them, then you're going to snowball yourself into a victory. It's 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 actually crazy to me, you know, just how good Leenok is. Really, really crazy to me. Beautiful army here out of Leenok. Very nice infantry force. We're not going to invest it into cavalry or anything like that. Instead, we're going to wall up and we're going to have a juggernaut army instead of a mobile army. And as such, now we are really able to push in and force the issue. We have veteran longbowmen. We have a crap ton of uh, upgrades for both our economy and our units. We're going to jump this gold mine once again. And I mean, I mean this is like a, a little bit of a boa constrictor play if you think about it. I think Valdemar never had the breathing room required to uh to to play this game evenly in in that right there is the brilliance of Leenok as a player now we're soaking up all the relics right now i mean we are in such a good position we're almost maxed out if you are ever like this high in population and your opponent's gold mines are burning you're winning <laughs> you're definitely winning so uh oh man what a beautiful beautiful game out of uh, Leenok right now Maybe not the like the, you know the most exciting or whatever, but personally, for me speaking, I prefer games that are a little bit shorter and a, and a little bit more one-sided than the long drawn-out games. If I'm trying to learn, if I'm trying to like pick up what's the right thing to do, 
what is something that I should be doing in my own games. Ah, oh, Manganel coming out here. Very, very nice, Bob Alamar. That's exactly what you're going to be needing in a situation such as this one. The question is, how effective is this Manganel going to be here? Very nice shot right there. Very nice shot. The Manganel is doing fairly well for itself right now. But again, we do have our own armor-clad men-at-arms here as Leenok. And we're just going to push forward and swamp everything uh, with the green units. And with that, I mean, this is going to be the last hurrah out of Aldemar. Uh, for sure. I do not uh, foresee Valdemar being able to deal with this uh, realistically at all. Uh, we do have another Manganel coming out, but that's just going to get jumped immediately right there. Very nice uh, villager pool right there by Valdemar. Going to be uh, repairing that. Getting an extra volley in, and we're actually repairing that very nicely, actually. Very nicely indeed. But unfortunately for Manganels like this one, you need a front line to protect them versus uh, melee units. As you can see, that just gets taken out right there. And uh, that right there, my friends, I mean, that's just going to be it. We even have the Imperial Age coming in for Leonok right now. Good game. So good. So good.